Oh yay, oh yay, oh yay. The Space Court is now in session. Hi, my name is Nathan Johnson and I am Executive Director of the Space Court Foundation. Over the past year and a half, we've had the privilege to host conversations with law and policymakers and international dignitaries working firsthand on the most important issues facing space law today. From the Artemis Accords to the resolution on reducing space threats, to the emerging field of space arbitration. We've managed to hear from officials while they are still in the process of developing, signing, and passing these milestones. That's why we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss the next development we cover in space law and policy. Now, as part of our retrospective week, we proudly present to you a special interview with one of the moderators of our very first Yuri's Night Court, Annie Hanmer, in conversation with Cassandra Steer. Good day, my name is Annie Handmer. I am an Australian space law researcher at the University of Sydney. And today I'm joined by Cassandra Steer. Cassandra, how are you? I'm doing great, Annie, always a pleasure. So I'm a senior lecturer at the ANU College of Law and a mission specialist with ANU Institute for Space. And with a particular interest in space security, space situational awareness, the wicked problems of space and space governance. That's awesome. So today we're going to talk a little bit about women in the space sector and particularly in um, space security and related fields. So I want to start with why is it important to be asking this question and thinking about the role of women in this sector? I mean, it's, it's important in the same way it is in any sector, right? Diversity is not just about ticking a box or saying we have a certain quota of women or people of color or, um, or even linguistic diversity. It's about ensuring that there are multiple perspectives, there's multidisciplinarity. Diversity brings better solutions to existing problems, but it can also prevent problems arising. So when you have homogeneity of thought, homogeneity of training, homogeneity of experience, which is what comes when we have too much of one gender in any space, then that can create problems. So diversity is about solving problems, but also coming up with new visions, coming up with new possibilities and preventing the problems that homogeneity can create. Do you think that the space sector currently has a good balance of genders represented? No, I don't. And why that matters particularly for space is that we're dealing with rapidly moving technology and innovation, um, and we need to have multiple hats on when we think about that. We're dealing with humans uh, expanding our exploration of space, our presence in space. In the very near future, we're going to be returning to the moon, uh, and there's a lot of excitement about long-term you know, habitation in space stations and eventually going on to other planets. Um, but even if we're thinking about the way we use space on Earth and the way that technologies impact our lives on Earth, there's an enormous amount of research about how uh, girls and women are disproportionately um, impacted by, for instance, climate change, by, for instance, um, lack of access to technology. And we're dependent on space for 100 things a day, from knowing what the weather is, to knowing how to navigate, to military operations, to financial transactions, to our education, communications. And so Anything that we know about how girls and women are disproportionately impacted by lack of access to those things, it just gets augmented when we look at um, not only how we use space-based space, space -based services on Earth, but also what we're going to be doing in the next five to ten years and the next few decades. Um, so we need to have more women involved in governance and decision making. We need to have many, many more women involved on the STEM side of things, in the engineering, design making and decision making. You know, it's only as of 2021 that there's actually a toilet installed on the International Space Station that is built for women's bodies. And there have been female astronauts on the International Space Station for many, many years. If we are thinking about long term human habitation, and especially if we're thinking about being able to continue, you know, um, or develop new societies where reproductive health is going to be an absolute necessity, women's bodies need to be taken into account at the very base level. Um, but, you know, as we move towards um, potential uh, tensions and conflicts around access to space, around, um, you know, natural resources in space, around the way that space-based services for militaries is starting to lead to space becoming a strategic domain unto itself with the potential for conflict in space, we need to have diversity in every single nook and cranny of what's going on in the space sector, and there, there aren't enough. So 
if we're looking to involve more women in space security and maybe the space sector more broadly, how do you think we should be going about that? So some of the obvious places to start, I guess, are in education. And there's a lot of work being done around encouraging girls to go into STEM. But it's not only STEM, and you and I are not, and we're not STEM trained, it's not an area of specialization, and yet we're very much space researchers, um, both interested in governance and legal questions. So increasing women's participation in, uh, in government, uh, in decision making and policy making around technology, in defense and strategy, increasing women's leadership positions uh, in, in those government organizations and agencies is very important. Um, and also looking at how we can encourage women to be um, more confident entrepreneurs um, and how we can encourage existing space companies to really be seeking out the talent amongst women um, and, and profiling them and giving them those opportunities that are often denied to them. Uh, and then, you know, there, there are some really great initiatives coming out of the UN, for instance, Space for Women, which is about mentoring women who are in the space sector, women mentoring the next generation. Um, but I think, I just think there's so much around the, the communication and the education as the starting point. It's really interesting. I'm going to weigh in here a little bit and just say that uh, one of the things that I sometimes say to young women or um, people of colour or other people who are traditionally excluded from the space sector is that if they're entering the space sector and feeling as they don't fit in, it's not their fault, it's because they're encountering an institution that has been specifically designed to exclude people like them. And as much as I think there's a big push at the moment, uh, as there should be, to try to open up and become more diverse and more inclusive, there are still institutional structures that do present boundaries. And I guess that's where organisations that promote that kind of cross-pollination, that interdisciplinary discussion, like you and I, who are not STEM people, to participate in STEM discussions, recognising that we have more to offer than just our particular zone of technical expertise at that point that it becomes really important. So from there, how can organisations and like Space Court Foundation and others encourage inclusivity in this field? What are some ways in which we are already doing this and we could do better? A really basic starting point is to avoid the ever pervasive panel, the all male panel. Um, <laughs> and there's some great social media that tracks that where you can post images of posters or events where there's an all male panel. It happens all the time and it happens often that it's an all white male panel as well. So if you're organizing an event, if you're organizing any kind of speaker list or workshop or conference or, or webinar, whatever's going on, just make sure that one of your key priorities is to seek out a diversity of talent. You know, internationally, a gender balance, um, uh, geographical balance, interdisciplinarity, like that is what's going to make for a much richer discussion anyway. Um, but that's the responsibility of people organizing those kinds of events because they have the ability to reach out through different networks. They have ability to ask the, the men who are also always asked and say to them, by the way, who else would you recommend who is younger or female or someone of color? And there's a risk in that sounding like a token, we just need to you know, tick that box. Um, but unless there's productivity around that, 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 that's not gonna shift. And what that also does is it means, particularly younger people who are watching those kind of events or attending them, see themselves in the experts speaking up there. They see, um, you know, they see that there are career pathways and trajectories. Um, and if it's an in-person event or even, you know, virtually there's an opportunity to reach out to those individuals afterwards. Um, and I guess, you know, I guess the other thing is to, is to put it on the agenda um, constantly. An organization who does a great job of this is actually NASA's uh, Jet Propulsion Lab, JPL, because they are seeking out totally groundbreaking ways of doing technology. And one example is the fairly recent uh, mission to Mars or recently got to Mars uh, in 2021, which was um, a really multidisciplinary team. It was led by someone who is transgender, who identifies um, you know, with non-gender identified pronouns, who has an activist background and who because of their training and their thinking and their identity was able to bring a really disruptive, positively disruptive way of thinking and, and bring up the best in the team by constantly asking them to break down expectations and break down assumptions and not to work on the way things have always been done. Following models like that, I think, is, is a really great way to go about it as well. 
And finally, Cassandra, you are a really inspirational woman in the space sector here in Australia and internationally. I know a lot of people look up to you. What advice do you have for future generations of women coming through who are interested in joining the space sector, but are not don't know quite where they'd fit or what they'd be doing? What advice have you got? Um, well, thank you for saying that because it's, you know, <laughs> I don't think we're always aware of the impact that we're making when we speak out, but that's, it, you know, as a kind of side note, another thing that people who already have the floor when they get invited to speak at international events is to also keep putting it on your agenda. Um, the advice I have, I guess, is to keep doing what you're good at and what you love, um, which was the advice I was given in year 11 and 12 at my school. They said, if you're not great at maths or science, don't do maths or science. So I did some science, but I was terrible at maths. <laughs> Um, and I was really uh, grateful to receive that advice because I got to flourish as a young person and find out the things I am good at, where my talents lie, where I have, you know, interesting creative contributions to make. Uh, and then, you know, I pursued what I thought was going to be more of a traditional pathway of, of a law degree. Um, and then I discovered that I could bring everything I'm passionate about into the space sector. So I'm passionate about responsible governance, I'm passionate about responsible citizenship, I'm passionate about the environment, about including First Nations, Indigenous peoples in where we're going in the 21st century, and I'm very passionate about restraining what states do when it comes to, to the potential for, for armed conflict. And I get to do all of those things in the space sector. So I didn't have to follow, I didn't have to think about becoming an astronaut or you know, joining JPL or something like that, because that, that wasn't me. So it really is just to, to follow what you're good at and what you love. And if space is something that you have a passion for and an interest in, there are whole careers that, uh, that don't yet exist or are starting to emerge or can be carved out um, with that passion and, 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 that, and, and just bringing what you're good at into what you do. Cassandra, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. I'm sure that everyone watching will have taken something away from this. And I look forward to catching up with you in person soon. Indeed. Thanks so much, honey. And thanks for the inspiration you provide too.